Hi, my name is Nanette Bulabash, and welcome back to Legislative Update. I am so thrilled to be back after several months. I was kind of busy the last couple of months. Some of you know I ran for State Assembly in the 27th District, but now I'm back co-hosting Legislative Update. My co-host, Jim Baumgart, who founded this show, uh, County Board Supervisor, former State Senator, he is retiring, but don't worry, we're not gonna let him off the hook so easily. He will come back for a thorough roasting so look forward to that. But in the meantime, I thought the first show I would do on my own, I wanted to invite some friends of mine. We all ran for state assembly as progressive democratic women in the state of Wisconsin. We all did not win our races. So this is gonna make interesting television. <laughs> it's certainly made for interesting life experiences. And that's what I wanna ask everyone about. So, um, you know me, I ran for my second bid for the 27th District. I absolutely loved it. Um, so let's hear from my friends. We're gonna start with Liz Sumner from Fox Point. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Uh, yeah, so I'm Liz Sumner. I live in Fox Point. I ran for State Assembly in the 23rd District. Um, I am currently an elected official on the Fox Point Village Board. Uh, I'm a small business owner. I have a women's clothing store that I've owned for 11 years now. And then I have two kids that are in public school, um, five and seven. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I've got, got a lot going on, but yeah. um, I, you know, I, I had a great time uh, running for state assembly and came close, but um, you did come not, close. not quite there. Okay, great. And Jenny Estrada. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm Jenny Estrada. I ran for the 25th district. I am a single mom of five. I work in the morning as a dairy farmer and then I work in the evenings as a roofer. So blue collar all the way. <laughs> yes. um, I uh, picked up those jobs because I was a statewide organizer for Voces de la Frontera, the immigrants, uh, immigrant rights organization here. Um, statewide, we have 13 chapters and I still help with that. I help with deportation. Um, I was excited to run, first time candidate um, in a very conservative area, but I was excited. We reached a lot of people. We got new voters out. It was just to me, exciting to be a part of the fall of Walker <laughs> and getting to see <laughs> yes. Evers win um, and yes. know that we all had a hand in that. That was exciting to me. So yeah. thank you for having me. Oh, you bet. <laughs> and Chris Ralph from Cedarburg. Yep. So I live in Cedarburg. I uh, married. My two children are grown up. Both are actually serving in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, Navy veteran myself. Yep. My husband's retired Navy. And, you know, we take our democracy seriously. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I ran. And uh, Assembly District 60, which is um, uh, Cedarburg, Port Washington, all the way up to the Sheboygan County line. And then it also includes uh, a pretty large um, chunk of Washington County. So again, very conservative district. A lot of folks are like, really? Are you sure you want to run as a Democrat? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, I'm sure I want to run as a Democrat. So it was, yeah, it was a great experience and um, glad I did it, even though we didn't win. Yeah, okay, so well, we're gonna backtrack a little bit and we have our coffee mugs because this is a little bit like The View, so I want this to be a conversation. So feel mm -hmm. free to jump in, uh, don't let me be the the hog of all the camera time here. <laughs> but how are you now? Think back to election night. It's been almost two weeks. Uh, this will be airing in December, but right now we've only had two weeks to reflect on that and how you felt then and how you feel now. How, what is going through your mind two weeks after this election that we worked so hard on? And I think I'm, I'm accurate in saying we all thought we could win. At least I did. Mm -hmm. I knew it was an uphill climb, I, but I still, especially near the end when you're caught up with that energy and you've got this team going to bat for you, you're knocking on doors every day. It's a wonderful experience and I really thought I would until around 10 o'clock, maybe even <laughs> earlier election night and then I didn't. So how are you now? I mean, I think it's definitely a transition, you know, when that, that's, I mean, I spent six months of my life just mm -hmm. thinking like campaign, campaign, campaign all the time, you know, where am I going to go knock doors? Like, who do I have to meet with today? Like, you know, mm -hmm. what can I do to, to, to reach voters? Um, and so having that just stop um, is, is really crazy. And so mm -hmm. I think I definitely feel uh, a little adrift. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I need to find something to like focus all of this energy um, and, you know, and wanting to make a difference and make a change and um, find something that I can, you know, put all of that into now. Yeah. 
you know, I, you know, I, I, I probably didn't have the level of confidence that you had. <laughs> okay. um, I was very realistic about my district and what we could do. And um, we looked at the results of the primary, how many votes I got compared to how many votes the Republican um, got. None of, neither of us were challenged, but when we looked at the numbers, we realized it was going to be an uphill right, right. climb. And so one of the things we did very early on is we defined what winning is. In addition to winning more votes, you know, what else constitutes winning in this district? And so a lot of it was building infrastructure, campaign infrastructure. We didn't have anybody who knew how to run a campaign in our district. Um, so it hmm. was building an infrastructure. It was getting out and talking to people about their issues and what's important and really learning the district. So um, I think a lot of times we think of campaigns in terms of single cycles. And I think in some of these red districts, it really has to be a multi-cycle mm -hmm. uh, event. And so once you've learned all these things from a campaign, what do you do next? And we were kind of thinking about what do you do next back after the primary. And so now we're kind of in that, that mode of what happens next. What do we do as a county? What do we do as candidates? What do we do as a state party um, to, to kind of capitalize on that learning? And so that's really what I'm focused on. You're really on. thinking long term. Yeah. Not just about you. No. Nope but the community and yep. the state. Yeah. That's awesome. It's yeah. about changing the culture. Um, yeah. I mean, we know I was, I'm a realist as well, and I didn't think that I was going to win the district as much as I stayed positive with my campaign. Yeah. I'm a realist, and I looked at the numbers. I've been watching the numbers, been watching the campaigns prior to me, and it's, we moved it a, a bit, which was great. It seems mm -hmm. like we're moving in the right direction. Um, but I do believe that in a, in a district that's so red. I mean, we, it's all about changing the narrative, changing the culture, getting people to in, not only be interested in voting again, we're, we're touching the demographics of strong Dems and Republicans, but there's so many people left out of that. So like with my campaign, we came in at late. We had three months from beginning to end was three months. Um, wow. And the progress that we made was great. I myself do plan to run in 2020, and it's about continuing that now. So I'm, I'm actually excited. Um, I haven't stopped. I thought it was gonna, I was gonna have a little bit of downtime, but it, it has not stopped. So it's about getting out there now and having even more time to make up ground. So people watching this who think, yeah, but you all lost. You're all sounding pretty upbeat. Um, it's exciting. I mean, it, Wisconsin did take a turn. Uh, yeah. We now have a Democratic governor, um, a true education governor, and we all have that. Yes, that. Yeah, sure I tell did. all of the, the people that worked so tirelessly on our campaign, knocking doors, making those phone calls. Um, our campaign had a lot of single moms that were out there spending their one hour that they had knocking on doors, and um, you know they were more crushed, I think, than I was because, of course, you keep up those high spirits. But I said, hey we have a true education governor and mm -hmm. be proud that each and every one of us <coughs> had a hand in that. Yeah, because without us knocking those doors, without us making those phone calls, that would have never happened. Yeah. I want to ask you about that. We're all moms. We, our children are grown, but you have, t young, you have five children, you have two young children. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like? Would, and do you think that's different than if you were a dad running for office? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, dumb yeah. question. <laughs> mine were excited. I don't know about yours, but mine yeah. were excited to knock on doors with us. They were okay. excited to go in the parades. We made it fun. Our campaign was completely different. Our parties were different. They were exciting. Um, a lot of family-friendly fun, and I think that's what got people excited and wanting to turn out to vote mm -hmm. is because they were seeing different candidates. Mm -hmm. um, we were, in fact, changing the narrative. Um, all of our incumbents that were completely different than us. Yeah. So yeah. that was exciting. People are, I think, now starting to think, hey, as a mom, we're busy. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, um, a lot of the women on my cabinet were like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to, I've never voted before. And it's like, these are your children's future. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. not, it's about through education, so but it's like, yeah. absolutely sure that it was the right thing to do. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that there were a lot of women, you know, in similar situations to me that, that looked at me and were like, there is someone that, you know, stands for what I believe in, who, you know, who, who, who looks like me and is going through the same things as me. Like, we need people like that in our state legislature that can represent us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so I really felt that. Like, I, you know, I felt that, you know, that commitment from, from people. And it was, it was really, um, and that support. And it, that, I think, you know, was so much more of, like, a takeaway from, from this than anything. It was just, like, having so many people, like, believe in you. And mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was really cool. I, I only ask because I, I saw this on Twitter when my friend um, 
and maybe it was on Facebook too, it was going around a female candidate, I think in Wisconsin, I don't remember her name, but she got this note from a constituent or a resident of her district who said, you know, it's fine that you, you, you re we really think you, if you were a mother, you should be home with your mm -hmm. kids and taking oh care of them. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't Wisconsin. Okay, well, yeah, good. But I still. just thought, whoa, it's 2018. I've gotten and those messages getting... on Facebook. You I, did? Oh, yeah, you I did, did not. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Especially yeah. as a single mom, they were like, hey, oh. don't you think you should be focusing on your children? Really? I said, what better okay. way to focus on yeah. my children than yeah. to make sure they yeah. actually okay. have a future in our yeah. state? So you didn't let it affect you? Oh, gosh, no. It gave me more power. I'm setting that example that, you know, moms can do everything. Things. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I yeah. think, and but bringing your children to events, you know, oh, yeah. I heard some comments like I, there was one event and someone's like, wow, those kids are a little disruptive. And it's like, yeah, but this is how you're inclusive as a party yeah. mm -hmm. is you make things more friendly to bring children. There yes. shouldn't be this expectation right. that you're going to separate your kids from what from your campaign. And so, hmm. you know, we need to, as Democrats, we need to make sure that our party meetings are kid friendly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that, that idea. You know, I love that. That, um, that children are welcome, and if you know, and if, if it means bringing a box of toys in the mm -hmm. back so kids can do stuff. Or yep. uh, Emily had a great Emily Segrist, who's not here, but she she ran just to the south of us, and mm -hmm. she, she went to a party meeting. She's like, why isn't there a box of like coloring books and stuff yep. here? Mm -hmm. yes. So if people bring their kids, they have something to do. So sometimes it's just making those small um, adjustments so that our meetings are kid friendly that they and then young adults that so we're not meeting in a bar every time so if you're 17 you can't go mm -hmm. um, very good point we yeah. had on our cabinet was mostly single moms so we had it looked like a daycare more than a cabinet meeting mm -hmm. and then awesome. we had high school students on ours so it, i mean i think it is like you said chris up to each and every one of us to kind of change not only yeah. that narrative when we're going out and knocking on doors but changing the narrative and within our own party of hey we're ready to run and who more knows about the issues we're living these yeah. exact issues we are. Um, yes. and we need Same. to change that for all of us. Well, that brings me to, to one of the questions that I had emailed to you earlier. There were 40, we were among 43 women who ran as Democrats for the assembly. Um, the incumbents got in, I believe. Um, a couple challengers got in, um, but not many. What does it mean that so many of us ran, and is there a difference? I guess you sort of answered my question already about women candidates versus men candidates. Are we seeing a change in Wisconsin's political culture because of this? Or answer any of those. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we're actually seeing a change, but I mean, I do think it's really important that we do see one. I mean, okay. I, what is it, 25% of our legislature is female? Mm -hmm. You know, we need a voice at the table. And we're more and than half of the population. Seriously, mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, it's time. And I, I, you know, I've said all, you know, during my campaign, when you surround yourself with a bunch of like-minded individuals, you're never going to come up with the best solution to a problem. And that's what we're seeing. Okay, very, very and, and great. Cool. Cultural change takes time. Mm -hmm. It's it's and 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 I do this for a living. I work as a management consultant for construction companies, and often when we're trying to do cultural change, we focus on those um, we call them cave people, citizens against virtually everything. You know, the diehard people that are all never change. You know, and I think one of the things we need to do is instead of focusing on those people, you know, you're never going to change, is you focus on the early adopters and to, to really bring about cultural change. You don't have to get 50% of the people on board. You only need to get, you know, about 20, 30%. Hmm. And then the culture starts to change. Yep. And so <laughs> even though we didn't win um, by the numbers, we, we were creating cultural change. The next time all, you know, the big, the big narrative this time was look at all those women running. Well, the next time there should be a narrative about look at all those competent people running. Mm -hmm. And so people will get past the yeah. fact that we're women. Mm -hmm. And oh. I think that's important. That, that's Maybe. awesome. That's, I've been watching politics for a long time. I remember 1992, which was the Anita Hill hearings. Oh, goodness, and yeah. after that, a rush of women ran for office. And it was pretty, and a couple of them got in for Senate, the U.S. Senate. It was really awesome because we were so angry about how she was treated. Um, and then, of course, after our current president was elected, that also brought in a rush of energy. Mm -hmm. We all took part in some of those marches that came after that. They were still going to keep them going. We're still angry at our president, 
but we're very glad about, about the new governor. A couple more questions about the campaign, and then I want to go into the future of Wisconsin and progressivism in Wisconsin and Tony Evers, which is awesome, and Sarah, our friend Sarah, right. who yes. is the state treasurer. But thinking back to the campaign, is there anything, because this was the first time for all of you, it was my second time. Second time definitely is better, I can tell you. <laughs> um, I, I just loved it. Mm -hmm. I, okay, here's my first question. What did you love about it? And what I loved about it what, was the chase. I, I, if I run again, it'll because I just love the idea of having an excuse to go up to a perfect stranger and introducing myself and asking them about themselves. I can still do what I guess I don't need the excuse. I just love doing that. I love talking to new people. And I had this, this excuse to do it. Hey, did you have my card? You know I'm running? It was awesome, because almost everybody, conservative, they were so uh, friendly. Mm -hmm. and, and most people are happy to talk. And a couple aren't, but you learn the second time not to take that personally, because mm -hmm. I, I just don't. It just rolls right off. Negative comments rolls, and that's made me a better person. So what did you love about campaign? I think, what was the best part? I think just the ability to, in Ozaki County, you know, Democrats were feeling very isolated. Uh, you know, you knock, you knock doors and talk to so many Democrats, they're like, I'm the only one on the block. And, oh, yes, yes. and so the ability to bring a group together that didn't know that they had that many allies okay. and, and all of us working for something bigger than ourselves. Yep. I think that just the camaraderie from that um, just just seeing people get excited about progressive values in a red area and feeling that we can make a difference um, just that that excitement and that momentum and that that really that that was that was wonderful awesome Jenny to me I think it was most exciting was to see all the families involved um, we had I mean in our parades we had like 50 kids marching with us and it was marching for a cause and I think getting the chance to educate them and knowing that this is our future and investing in them was exciting and seeing moms get more excited about the direction of that their children are going but then educating them as well um, I think that was exciting I think what was super exciting to me was like I actually got to talk to even my friends. There's a lot of friends that was like, I didn't never, I never knew that they've never voted before. Yeah. Wow. And to not only be there that first time that, that they voted, but to see them so excited that I am like with the process was, was great. And knowing that they were out touching other people, it's like we are making a real difference here. Yeah. And that was exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything to add to that? I mean, I think I would probably just agree. You know, I think there there were so many things that it's really hard to just pick one because it was just a really um, incredible experience all around. What was hard about it? What 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 would you what? Let me phrase it this way: What would you advise someone who is thinking about running to look out for as they? Um, what what would be your best advice to someone, or what do you wish someone had told you, perhaps? Answer that however you want. I would say stay true to yourself. Um, I know there's a lot of people that have different ideas on how a campaign should be run, but I think you're going to have the most fun and the most benefit out of it. You stay true to who you are and not try to run it like anybody else has in the past or ha will in the future. Staying true to yourself and running it how you want to, it's fun. It, it is really fun. Yeah. You could I don't think I would try to talk anyone out of I wouldn't. running. I mean, I think it's like having a child, mm -hmm. you, you go into it not necessarily knowing all the mm -hmm. stuff that's going to happen, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and you do it anyway, um, and, then it, and then you learn from it. So I think everybody's experience is going to be a little bit different. So, okay. you know, there's certainly tactical things that I would have done differently, but there's nothing I would say, oh, watch out for this, because I think everybody's campaign unfolds in a different way. Mm -hmm. Um, and you encounter problems and then you figure out how to overcome them. I think maybe just be flexible that you have a plan and then things are going to happen mm -hmm. and you have to react to them. So, okay. you know, I think maybe just to be flexible, but I'd recommend, just, you know, anybody that's thinking about running to, to give it a try. Mm -hmm. And if your mom packed lots of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. And it's such a wonderful thing to do. I am remembering and this was in Howard's Grove when I was doing doors. Um, I was at a doorstop and they had a sign, no solicitation. And I never knew how to respond to that because we weren't really selling anything. Mm -hmm. um, I still knocked and um, nobody was home, but the homeowner, a younger woman, 
drove up in her big uh, her SUV and she yelled from her car, looking at me. And this is what she said: "If you're a politician, get off my property right now." I mean, she was angry, yeah, and wow. that just whoa. And then she says, "Didn't you see my no solicitation sign?" And I said, "I should have just not argued. You know, that, that's the <laughs> advice I got, and, and mm -hmm. I wish I'd followed. But instead, I said, "Well, I wasn't selling anything. I'm running for office. You're selling your vote." I said, well, that's free. And then I kind of walked <laughs> off. I, I didn't handle it well, a learning experience. But I was stunned by that negativeness mm -hmm. about what we were doing, which is a noble thing, don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah. So OK, and, and one more question about the campaign. Um, we all ran in conservative districts. And I don't know about you, but I got a lot of I, I said I loved all my conversations, and some of the best debates and give and take was with conservatives and Republicans, just wonderful, wonderful people who, mm -hmm. who opened their door to me and talked and shared their ideas mm -hmm. and listened to mine. Um, but I did get, you know, what is it that conservatives get wrong about us, about progressives? I got some weird ones like you guys are all anti-business and you own a business, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And that was after I'd said something at a public forum about Foxconn, which I think we have very good reasons to be skeptical about. Yes. Even more now. Yeah. Yeah. Even, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But he he sort of generalized. You're all anti-business. And another time I'm I'm doing doors. I pass a guy on the sidewalk. He didn't look very friendly, but I'm, you know, I hey, do you want to take my literature? You know, I'm running. No, you know, and then he w kept walking, and then he turned back and he said, um, "Why do you always want? Why do you Democrats want to take our money?" And, and again, I should have just smiled and said, "Have a nice day," but I didn't. I didn't. I, I had to push back. I think and there's like a lot of miseducation, so, and I mean because you have more pr mm -hmm. more control on how you sell a product than a person and they see all the negative ads and mm -hmm. you know they paint democrats to be this certain way that we just want to give money away to everybody and it's mm -hmm. like we're complete liberals when that's the mm -hmm. exact opposite um but we do know that there's enough money in the budget if you're fiscally responsible to get the things mm -hmm. done that we need to get yeah. done um i think the most interesting conversation that i had was again with a with a conservative and i was actually in a section 8 housing unit and I knocked on the door because there was a big Confederate flag, and I thought, why not? Oh my. So Whoa. I knocked, and um, he was like, uh, which side are you running on? Are you a Democrat? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, our, um, I, I don't want to talk to you. I'm like, well, can I just ask why? And he's like, well, because you want to take away our guns. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, first of all, it's not true. I'm, I, you know, I'm a hunter. I have my hunting license. I'm, I don't want to take away your guns. There's a difference between gun reform and taking away your guns. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I said, well, let me just ask you a question. So how long have you lived here? And he's like, I've lived here five years. And I said, so you've lived in Section 8 housing for five years. So in those five years, you haven't been able to have a gun. But you're voting against the very people that want to take the very roof above your head away from you because they want to take away badger care. They want to take away food yeah. care, which are things that you oh, need in order to answer. live in Section 8 That's housing. Awesome. Uh -huh. I said, so I hope when you vote this next time, you just think about it a little bit more on what's more important. Yeah, I think it's hard, you know, think about most the normal person spends maybe five minutes a week thinking about politics. Mm -hmm. And so they are bombarded with propaganda messaging, and then they have to sort through that and figure out what's true and what's not. Mm -hmm. And so what sticks are these little sound bites like, Democrats want free stuff. Mm -hmm. I heard that a lot. Well, you just yeah. want, to, you want to take my money to give free stuff mm -hmm. to other people. Mm -hmm. Well, when we talk about giving free stuff away, you know, there's one party that decided to give four and a half billion dollars away to a very profitable <laughs> yeah. uh, foreign corporation yes. uh, for the promise of jobs. And now, if they deliver those jobs, it's <laughs> it like three hundred thousand anyway. dollars like each, each per job, job, more than we've ever spent. I'm a, a state. you know, I'm, more I'm than a, any other country, a state in the country. I, I'm, I'm a data person, and I know that you know from a business standpoint, that's just a poor business yeah. decision. Mm -hmm. So the idea that we're the ones giving money away, mm -hmm. um, you know, one person's entitlement is another person's investment. So almost any discussion about government is really a discussion of resource allocation. Mm -hmm. And so I think as Democrats, we ran on a 
fiscal um, accountability platform mm -hmm. yep. okay. that if you're going to invest, there needs to be a return. And I think we all agree one of the best investments you can make is education. Amen. If I teach, mm -hmm. if I if I give a child a great education, they're going to grow up and they're going to be a productive member of society. Mm -hmm. They're going to generate revenue and they're going to pay taxes. Um, that's an economic yeah. argument. And so the idea that Democrats are bad for the economy, I think that's that's the biggest fallacy. And mm -hmm. I think you know we 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 ought to do a better job of messaging mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But I you know that's the one area I think that that folks folks get it wrong. Because the Republicans thrive on that, yeah. that wrong messaging. Yeah. We all sound so reasonable. <laughs> we all should have won. <laughs> I think that was sort of one of the biggest, um, like, joys, though, of knocking on doors was talking to Republicans and then have just seeing the look on their face completely change, realizing oh. that I am not crazy. You okay. know, I am not just going to come and, you know, tax them 75% okay. of their income or whatever. Like, I have their, I have genuine ideas about how to make this state better, and they're not crazy, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I that was, and, uh, that was you really cool. were talking cool. to people who really didn't talk to many progressives. Well, apparently. right. And I mean, I wow. think that's so, that's so important about what we all did was had the conversation because so many people don't. And I think the doors that frustrated me the most were the ones that just got slammed in my face. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, I'm here on your doorstep, like willing to talk to you to find out what's important to you. Like, and so tell me, let's have this conversation. You know, I want to hear your side. Okay. So what happens now? We've got Tony mm -hmm. Evers, we've got Sarah Godlewski for state hey. treasurer, we've got mm -hmm. Josh Call, um, I believe, who mm -hmm. won, yep. um, and we've got the uh, lieutenant governor as well, Mr. Barnes. So this is this is mm -hmm. terrific. So mm -hmm. statewide, I'm been, I've been telling people we we are progressive, but our little districts are not. What's going to happen? Are you? I mean, I'm hopeful about Tony, mm -hmm. but then he's got this powerful legislature, both sides, very strongly conservative. Mm -hmm. How's that going to work? Well, the governor, you know, just by holding that position, he's got a megaphone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. all these messages that, you know, as individual candidates, we struggle maybe reaching everybody with education, health care. Uh, we now have somebody in the governor's office that can help message. So I think mm -hmm. the critical thing coming out of Madison is we need uh, very frequent and consistent messaging on ed education about the issues that matter. And I think it, it's a, it still is our responsibility to continue, even though he's a Democratic governor, is to make yeah. sure that he's doing what he is supposed to be doing. I mean, there's so much divide on the sides, but I think us as not only candidates, but people living in our community, we need to make sure, even though we have a Democratic governor, that he's he is, you know, stepping up to those promises that he made and that in that campaign, and that's it's our responsibility to hold everybody accountable. Yeah. Well, including our assembly people. <clears throat> I, you know, my my opponent all of a sudden decided to adopt a bunch of uh, democratic, you know, policy yes. issues. All right. Uh, and that's so I think you know, making to. sure that they're actually following through. Good. Yep. So we only have a minute or so left. What happens next? What are each of you going to do politically and personally, if you want to share that? What's next? I'll start. Um, I have this show, <laughs> which is great, which is a platform. They don't mind. Um, I am going to invite our lawmakers on. I don't know if they'll come. It was hard to get them to, to talk to me, um, but um, we will see. And I, I, have, I have some ideas for this show. I, I will still be active in the Democratic Party, um, still active in Forward Sheboygan, so, and I'm going to mentor and encourage young people to vote. What about you, Chris? <laughs> I don't know yet. To run, I mean. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, right now, I'm just working on learning, uh, trying to capture what we learned from the campaign and make sure that, that that knowledge is passed on to, you know, for anybody that wants to run again in the future. And then after that, uh, we'll have to see. Okay. Jenny? I will be running for office again in 2020, and um, it's about still staying active in the community. And in fact, my energy level is still 100%, and we have hit the ground running. Even though it's two years away, we have two years to get people excited awesome. and to change things around. So. Yeah. Liz? Yeah, I'm, I'll continue my service on the Fox Point Village Board, and um, yeah, and I'm just looking to to find some outlets to to make a difference in my community. That's great. It's great that you're still on the Village Board. Yeah. So thank you all, and thank, thank you, audience, for watching. Um, this has been our first um, single legislative update. We are going to come up with a new name for the show, so I'm open to ideas. It has to reflect. I think the fact that Wisconsin and Sheboygan are undergoing a renaissance. So that's my working title for now. This is Nanette Bulabash. Thank you so much for joining us on Legislative Update.